Following the food people's recent trip to New York, we thought we'd share with you our thoughts, views and opinions on the food shops, markets and restaurants visited as part, as part of our visit to New York to give you a feel of what's happening on the Big Apple's food scene. First on our foodie hit list was the Chelsea Market, located on the Lower West Side Meatpacking District. This former Oreo cookie factory, now renovated, houses a fantastic array of foodie sights, sounds and smells, ranging from fresh fish, fresh pickles, cupcakes, fabulous bakery and not forgetting the famous Manhattan Fruit Exchange. It's well worth a visit. It wouldn't be a trip to New York without visiting those famous independent grocers like the Balducci's, Dean and DeLuca and Whole Foods. But what's new this year? Well HMR seems bigger than ever. Big Eat, and I mean seriously Big Eat sandwiches. Chip bars, or pommes frites bars as they're calling them, where you have chips with a variety of different dips and salts and so on. Hot eating food to go and salt and pepper bars are some of the things that we haven't seen before. But what about the restaurant scene? Well, there's certainly lots happening on that front. First, we visited Blue Smoke. Blue Smoke is an authentic pit barbecue experience, serving belly-busting dishes with their origins in Memphis, Texas, the Carolinas. Also serving fabulous cocktails, just what you need after, a, after an eight-hour plane journey. We couldn't go to New York without visiting Anthos. Anthos is one of the most talked-about restaurants on the New York food scene currently serving avant-garde contemporary Greek-inspired cuisine. It deserves all of the praise and credit coming its way. The smoked octopus was particularly good. A restaurant that we've wanted to visit for a number of years now is Blue Hill. Chef Dan, Dan Barber serves contemporary American-inspired cuisine with a real focus on seasonality, provenance and produce from the Hudson Valley. The strawberry cannelloni was a fabulous finish to our meal. Also much talked about on the New York food scene is Bar Blanc, a both a bar and a restaurant, serving American Nouveau style cuisine with influences from both France and Italy. A particular favourite on the menu that evening, the plump main scallop pan seared with pea and cauliflower. Truly delicious. Our penultimate New York gastro experience was at the Sushi Bar at 15 East where we had authentic delicacies such as fresh tofu, eel and smoked tuna sushi. Before catching the flight home we had lunch at the Jean Georges, the epitome of New York fine dining with the power to take your breath away, with its avant-garde cuisine with Asian influences and Johnny Lazzini's to, to die for desserts. Culinary highlights were, well, the entire tasting menu, but dishes of note were soft poached egg with caviar, sea trout sashimi with lemon sabayon, sea urchin on toasted rye with jalapeno, lemon and sea salt, the foie gras creme brulee and of course the famous chocolate fondant. The Jean Georges is a real three star culinary must do whilst in New York. So that brings to an end our culinary tour of New York for 2008. To understand how food tours, gastronomic and culinary experiences can be used as a basis for creative thinking and idea generation in food, contact the food people at www.thefoodpeople.co.uk or drop an email to helpme at thefoodpeople.co.uk.